verse tonight that God is going to speak to us this evening. And we are in 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter, please. And we're in chapter 3 tonight. And the one verse that we're going to read is verse number 18. Now, 1 Peter chapter 3. And we're down at verse number 18, please. And we read these words this evening. For Christ also hath suffered once, well, hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. That he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Let's just read that again. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. And we know that the Lord will bless that verse to our hearts this evening. There is no greater there is no greater symbol best known the world over tonight than the symbol of the cross. No greater symbol is best known the world over than the symbol of the cross. No other symbol tonight carries with it a greater message the world over than the symbol of the cross. Even though tonight the cross is a symbol of shame, even though tonight the cross is a symbol of suffering, even though tonight the cross is a symbol of death, yet there's no greater symbol known the world over than the symbol of the cross. How does the cross make you feel tonight? The hymn writer said, And so I shall cherish the old rugged cross, the, the emblem of suffering and shame. Why tonight would one cherish the cross if the cross tonight is an emblem of suffering? Why would one tonight cherish the cross this evening if it's an emblem of shame? Why would one cherish the cross tonight? One would cherish the cross of because of what happened on the cross. One would cherish the cross tonight because of the one who died on the cross. And that's why tonight I cherish the old rugged cross. On a hill far away, stood an old rugged cross, yes, the emblem of suffering and shame. And you know, friend, tonight, what makes the cross special this evening is the one who hung and suffered and bled and died there. And I wonder tonight, how do you feel about the cross? How do you think tonight the cross will make you feel when you're dying? You mightn't have much time for the cross when you're living and life's going well, but how do you think the cross will make you feel when you're dying? In September 1944, Allied troops were parachuted behind enemy lines. It was Operation Market Yard. The Allied forces were sent to take the bridge and keep the bridge 
at a place called Arnhem. The operation didn't go according to plan. Many Allied forces lost, lost, lost their lives. And it came to a place where it was a place of surrender. And we come to a place tonight at that moment and that time when it was a scene of carnage and death. Many soldiers were dead and dying. As some priests were ministering the last rites to the dying and padres were ministering to the dying, one young soldier, as he lay dying, began to sing these words. Hold thou thy cross before my closing eye. Shine through the gloom and point me to the sky. Heaven's morning breaks and earth's vain shadows flee in life and in death. Abide with me. That young soldier was just 22 years of age. In fact, that story was told at the closing of the 1977 war movie, A Bridge Too Far. So touching was that moment that they included that moment at the end of that film. That's how the cross felt to him tonight. What does the cross, how does it make you feel this evening? The emblem of suffering and shame. It's not about tonight what the cross makes you feel. Here's the message tonight, the cross. How does God feel? The cross tonight how does God feel? How does God feel about the cross tonight? How does the cross make God feel? Because I can tell you something now, there's nothing declares God's feelings more so than the cross. Do you see in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, you'll notice that the cross isn't mentioned. But 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, even though it's not mentioned, you're, you're staring at the cross. In 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, that one verse tells us as how God feels when it comes to the cross. Do you know what the cross shows me tonight? The cross shows me how God feels tonight about sin. How God feels about sin tonight. Because in this verse we read, For Christ also hath once suffered for sin. This cross tonight shows us how God feels about sin tonight. Do you know tonight you'll find many fools in the Bible? Boy, you'll find them in the Bible. In 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse 33, there you'll find a fool there, and you'll find that fool concerning his death. We we'll see the dying of a fool, died Abner as a fool dieth. You can die like a fool, love. In Luke chapter 12 and verse 20, we're having the dying of a fool, but we have the thinking of a fool tonight. 
You remember Luke chapter 12, verse 20? This man, he thought within himself that he had much med led up for many years, and God said to him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. You can't only die like a fool. I'll tell you, you can think like a fool. Oh, you can think like a fool. Man, you can die like a fool. Psalm 14, verse 1, Psalm 53, and verse 1. You'll not find the dying of a fool there. You'll not find the, 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 the dying of a fool. You'll not find the thinking of a fool. But you'll find the speaking of a fool. Boys, a lot of boys are fools in the way they speak. Psalm 53, verse 1, Psalm 14, verse 1. What do we read? The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. No God. Proverbs 14 and verse 9. You don't have the dying of a fool there. You don't have the thinking of a fool there. You don't tonight have the speaking of the fool there. You have the mocking of a fool. You have the mocking of a fool. And Proverbs 14 and 9 says this. Fools make a mock at sin. What does Proverbs chapter 14 and 9 mean when it says fools make a mock at sin? This is what it means. People tonight who take sin lately and people tonight who think they can get away with sin and people who think tonight their sin will never be judged. The problem today is this. People can sin tonight and think they'll get away with it. I'm telling you something tonight. Governments make a mock at sin. Governments today are passing laws that are an abomination. Governments that are passing laws today that are contrary to God's Word. And I'll tell you this, when one makes a mock at sin tonight, you're mocking God. And governments will pay the price for it someday. And my dear friend, you'll pay the price for it someday. Fools, make a mock at sin. It's a dangerous thing to mock sin tonight because even though a man might mock at sin, sin someday will turn and mock them. There was a doctor who was well gifted in a hospital in London, a well-liked doctor, a great doctor he was. But this doctor used to mock Christians. And every time someone spoke to this man concerning Christ and concerning everything that Christ had did for him, he done nothing, only turn around and mock them. He used to blatantly stand up and say, Christ, who would be mad enough to follow? Who was he? Just a carpenter's son. He made it his business to mock Christ and to downgrade him. In the final weeks of his life, Lying on what was to be his deathbed, he was greatly troubled. Family and friends couldn't pacify him. And it came to his last day. He wasn't troubled, I'll tell you, he was terrified. The family asked him as to why was he terrified, why was he troubled? He says, my mocking has come back to mock me. And I know soon I'm going to meet the carpenter's son to be judged. Psalm 
Sin's a terrible thing, friends. As a man who hates cancer tonight, So God, a thousand millions times over, hates sin. And the cross tells us tonight how he hates sin. Because this verse says that Christ had to once suffer for sins. What does that tell me tonight? That tells me that sin has to be punished. You know, sin's an awful thing in the sight of God tonight. Listen, sin's an awful thing in the heart and in the soul of a sinner. And friend, every one of us were born in sin. Every one of us were born in sin. And our sins tonight have separated us from God. My unsaved friend tonight, no matter how good you are, upright you are, churchy you are, friend, your sins have separated you from God. But the message of the gospel tonight is this. Christ hath once suffered for sins. Sins are so awful in the sight of a holy God that God had to punish sin. Won't you notice the person punished? It was Christ. My dear unsafe friend tonight, the only way that God could punish sin was, was by sending His Son to the cross. And He who knew no sin was made sin for us. I'm telling you, no old religious ritual can do it for you. And there's men and women and they've been hoodwinked from pulpits. Oh, do this, do that, and do the other thing. No, friend, Christ had to suffer once for sins. Christ went to the cross so that he could be made sin for us, so that God could once and for all punish sin tonight. The cross was the place where God punished sin this evening. Thank God the cross was not a place where God punishes sinners. It was the place where God punished sin. And Christ suffered once for sins, the just for us, the unjust. And I'll tell you, the cross tonight teaches me how God feels about sin. But I'll tell you this tonight. The cross tells me how God feels about sinners. And friend, tonight, the cross teaches me how God feels about sinners. Christ suffered once for sin. Yes, the just for us, the unjust. Here it is tonight, that He might bring us to God. Unsafe friend tonight, the cross declares God's feeling for sinners. It was there where God commanded His love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Because you see, God sent not a son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved tonight. Do you know what the cross teaches you tonight as it teaches me? How God feels about you. How God feels about me. Christ hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Even though, friend, our sin tonight, awful as it is in the sight of a holy God, yet the cross teaches me tonight that He loved us so much that He sent His Son to the cross for the purpose in reaching you and reaching me. 
You see, friend, tonight there was no other good enough to pay the price for sin. He only could unlock the gate of heaven to, to let us in. The cross teaches us how God feels tonight. How God feels about sin. And in this verse, the cross also teaches us what God feels about sinners. You know, every sinner tonight who are who are outside of Christ is on the broad road tonight that's leading to hell and to destruction. But tonight the cross is teaching you how God feels about you. God sent his son to the cross to reach you. Christ sent his son to the cross so that you could make your way back over to God. Do you know tonight there's a bridgeless gulf that's fixed between you and God? It's caused by your sin tonight. But thank God it has been bridged. By the cross. Napoleon was at his wit's end. His enemies had destroyed every bridge there was. And the enemies were closing in. The command was given to his men to get into the river to make a makeshift bridge and hold up pieces of wood so that they could form a makeshift bridge. It was the only way they could be saved. It was the only way Napoleon could win the day. As the command was given, his men got into the river. Many of them were washed away to death. But many of them voluntarily, without, without being forced, got into the freezing waters of the river. They gathered up whatever wood they could and they held it high like this. And every last soldier including Napoleon, made their way across. After every last man was across, Napoleon gave the word and the command for these men to come out of the water again, but none of them moved. None of them moved. Why? Because every last one of them froze to death. And history records that it was one of those moments when Napoleon was moved to tears. When he thought of all of those men who bridged the gap so that he could go across. Christ bridged the gap for you and me, friend. He paid the debt in his own death. He stayed there the whole time. And tonight, he did it to bring us to God. That's how God feels about you, sinner friend, tonight. And that's how God feels about sin tonight. Christ once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he may bring us to God. If you have never been to Christ tonight, now's the time to get to Christ. 
the enemy's closing in quick. Christ, give us life so that you can cross. You can be saved. That's how God feels tonight. About sinners. That's how God feels about sin. The cross tells the story, doesn't it? All for you, all for me, the cross, and how God feels. Let's take a wee moment and bow in prayer. The cross tonight leaves you without excuse tonight. Christ died that awful atoning death just for the purpose that you can be saved tonight. Trust him tonight. Get across tonight before it's too late. He died to save your soul. And so, Lord, to this end, we commend the eternal issues of this meeting. And we thank Thee, Lord, tonight for the cross. It's there where we see Your love. And, Lord, we just ask You to undertake tonight and give the saving grace. We pray in Jesus' name and for His sake. Amen. Now, we're not going to sing our closing hymn tonight. We're going to slip out quietly.